Dirk from Sumo's Projects, both on YouTube and Instagram. In today's project, I'm going to be making a, a type of A-frame ladder stand, uh, a, a place where you can put all sorts of trinkets, ornaments, photos, uh, you know, types of pots and things like that. But before we go there, make sure you uh, subscribe to Carpet Tech and um, go and enjoy all the great products, especially the Craig range that they have on offer. All right, let's make it. G'day and welcome to this build. This, uh, this video is about making an A-frame or a display frame, uh, whichever way you'd like to call it. Um, I'm using a lot of leftover materials that I've had for quite a long time and I'm uh, thinking that these uh, materials are adequate sizes for um, this type of project because it has to be a sturdy frame uh, that's going to stand up. And it approximate height of about six, six foot or around the 183 centimetre uh, tall standing when it's in position. I'm using my reversible stop here on uh, my miter saw station. Uh, this is a good idea to, if you've got boards that are a little bit longer in length than uh, you know what your normal capacity is, this is a good way to be able to um, Bring them in and uh, make sure you get repeatable cuts. The splay angle which I've nominated is about 8 degrees and once uh, these are up standing the frame um, you'll find that the uh, gap is approximately around 800 millimetres at the bottom. And uh, this was sufficient uh, in uh, determining, you know, where I was going to put this in the house. So, just a lot of uh, cutting up now, and uh, we're using pocket hole joinery once again because it's a, a beautiful way to join pieces together. This piece here, it had some uh, sort of rip out marks and. I'm just sort of accentuating that with the grinder and um, and then sanding it down because I, I think it really looks good and it looks very rustic. Driving the pocket hole screws home now. Uh, this is a good part of the process. It brings everything together uh, very quickly, which is um, you know if you've only got so much time on your weekends or after work. Um, it, it, it just gives you the opportunity to make any project come, come to life and um, that's why I really like pocket hole joinery. This is the front of the A-frame. So, now I'm making the backing. This is uh, some pine, structural pine I bought from the hardware shop. And it's um, it's a little bit smaller in, in the uh, overall dimensions compared to the material I had from my shipping container. Um, but same process in making sure that all the uh, heights and measurements are exactly the same as the front. So putting this to work. Now adding some hinges, this is primarily to make it look a little bit like an A-frame and um, it, it also makes the joining of the two pieces a lot easier um, as you can see here. Next part of the build is I want to make this have a, a little bit of an old school uh, charm feel about it because I think this type of build is something that you know really leads itself to having that rustic appearance and given the materials I am using I'll find that um, you know this will look really good so I'm actually I'm drilling a hole here with a forstner bit and then I'm going to add a dowel uh, to four corners and this will also hold the, uh, the whole A-frame into place uh, Plus, giving it that you know unique sort of old world charm look.
cutting four dowels here on the bandsaw and uh, it's as simple as you know cutting these out and make sure you sort of take the corners off here on the disc sander or uh, any type of sanding uh, device that you have and um, adding the glue and just merely pushing these into uh, the holes that were pre-drilled before uh, so they'll plug the gap but you have them exposed a little bit to give it that uh, you know like made uh, in the 1800s sort of feel about it. It's time to make the display shelves themselves. So I'm cutting a 45 degree um, angle here and then I'm going to take, go back over to the table saw and cut them down to a, uh, a little bit smaller size. So it, it becomes evident once uh, you see the construction of how these shelves go together. Because one thing is to not have them protrude too high above the shelf. Uh, the other is to just ensure, in case anything moves through any uh, circumstances, you have, uh, you know, so hopefully things don't fall off the edge. Um, I'm just uh, gluing and putting some uh, brad nails in, and this is holding things into place very securely. Next part of it is, I'm going to make the backing and also tack this on uh, using the brad nailer once again, and a little bit of glue. One thing to be aware of here is don't have too much pressure otherwise you'll throw uh, these nails right through and nothing will adhere or hold. The trim router I put a flush trim bit in and uh, that'll cut everything nice and even. Now a little bit of elbow grease is uh, to just take your sharp corners off everywhere and uh, commence everyone's favourite job, that being the standing. And uh, I don't think too many people would put their hands up to say this is my favourite part of the process, but hey, we have to do it. <laughs> anyway, this is a bottom shelf. Uh, it's going to just be an extra tier on this, so just a bit of a clean up, cut it to size, and um, now we commence putting a finish on. This is a walnut finish, and I think it looks pretty good. I'm applying three coats of this finish, uh, putting it on quite liberally. Uh, I think that's sufficient and it does take away the uh, look of the natural pine and gives it a feel that it's a, a hardwood that you've used, the hardwood type finish, so come up really nicely. So just to get all my levels right and then uh, using screws to join the display shelves and um, I'm pretty happy with the whole build as it has come to the conclusion. So thank you for watching, make sure you subscribe to Carbot Tech and uh, enjoy all the other great videos from the makers who make them. Thank you very much for watching and uh, I'll see you next time. Hooroo.